Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Okay, tomato number nine. I think we can continue here with the cells and jump into the configuration. Yes. I'll start with the simplest one. I think the correct answer is the simplest. So I can duplicate and say renders question text. Okay. So I'm expecting something like this. The assert equal cell question label dot text to be equal. Okay, one. Yeah. So we don't have this question label, but let's see what else we need. I can extract that. Let's call it just answer. I can make it here and say something like question. Yeah. Okay, so we need this question here in our structure. Let's make this first. Let's select question. If I command you, I should have some building errors. And I can pass a question right here. Yeah, but we start seeing a pattern there. Every time we change something in this model, we're going to break those tests. Right. So now, instead of this, I can have make correct answer function here. Or it could be make answer. Okay. And pass here is correct. It's a bool. We don't need a default value for that. Yeah. We can give it but the question, question. can have a default value. It could be an empty string. So now I presentable answer with a question. And if it's correct. And let's replace everywhere it's creating. Make answer here. Yes. And up there. Let's run those tests. Oh, good. Cool. Okay. So now I can continue. And I have the question text here. Well, let's use the make answer now. Now, what I'm missing is the question label. I think we can create a nib. So we can still separate the layout, fr layout from the code. Okay. And we are going to call it correct answer cell. Yes, to match the class. View correct answer cell. Okay. And let's remove that view that we don't need. Okay. We can grab a label. So a couple of things we have to do. We need yes. to set the class of the cell. Here, we need to set it to the correct answer cell. So from my label, control drag. Question label, I think we called it. Yep. We need to create a reusable identifier mm -hmm. for the cell. And that's something I don't like. Let's use the same name of the class. Okay. That's very fragile because if we change this class name, it's gonna we have to remember to go there and change it. Okay. We have some tests for that, so we are good. If we go back to our tests, if I try to build, first of all, it says that this is optional. Yeah, we have a test that guarantees that, so yeah. Command U and we crash. Yeah, we need to register this cell. Yes. And we need to dequeue that. Mm -hmm. Instead of having this Boolean checked in line, let's have an if. Okay. Say so return this cell. Otherwise, return the yeah. wrong answer. But now let's get the correct answer from the table view. Here on my table view, dequeue with identifier. And we pass the same identifier. Oh, yeah. And it's an optional. So I think we should not be crashing here now. But we should have a fading test. And we do. And we do. Okay. We can capture this cell, cast it as correct answer cell, turn it and configure it. In our question label text, we would like the answer question. Yes. Okay. It passes. So next thing. I think we should carry on with the next test before we start refactoring. So I need an answer label here, and we need a way to give an answer. I assume we're going to use the same pattern. So I'm going to give it an answer also. Let's say A1 for now. You don't need to give it a question. I do not. You're correct. This is equal A1. I can add in my presentable answer. Let's call it answer. Yeah. In my factory method here, I can just make a new parameter, answer. The presentable answer is going to get the answer from the parameter. 
And the good thing about this is that we're not breaking any other test now. So our refactoring was worth it. Exactly. So the only problem now is the answer label. And I'm just going to drag one here. One more label. And this can be the answer label now. And a control drag answer label for on the tests. We are failing because it is not configured in Solfero. So I'm just going to give the answer answer. <laughs> okay, on the answer label. Yes, that's fine for now. Okay, we are passing. Any refactorings here? I think we can have one test only for the configuration. Mm -hmm. So we can say view load with correct answer configures cell. And we can just get this guy over here and we can just give it a question also. Yeah, I think we can get rid of the first test as well because everything is tested in that. Right, with a bank here. Yeah. Since we have the bank, that would be a crash. Right. And a crash is failing test. Mm -hmm. Although I don't like crashes in my mm -hmm. tests, they're hard to debug. So let's try to get rid of this Okay, so we use the question mark there. And we're going to get an optional. So the compiler will complain. Yep. And, but we can use the question mark in the cell as well. And assert also that it is not nil. Yes, because if this test fails now with those assertions we have, I would have no idea why the text is not A1. Because I would have three failing tests there. Right. If we assert if it's nil, I know that the other two tests will fail. I think it's better than the crash. Yeah, I agree. But it's up to you. And it's the documentation also. It gives you more meaning, you know, when you see a certain not nil cell here. Yeah. You could also break these in three tests as we had before. Whatever works for you. Okay. So we can get this configuration here extracted, maybe. Can be in its own method. Yeah. I'm going to create a correct answer cell function here. This is going to return a correct answer cell. Doesn't matter for the color. True. Okay, let's go with a table view cell. And I need to give it the answer. And that's a presentable answer. Now, correct answer cell for answer. And this is gone. And now cell for O is much lighter. Let's run the tests. Okay, so since we have the correct answer test, the wrong answer cell is pretty much the same. I think we can copy and paste the test and just change whatever we need. So this is the wrong answer. This is going to be false. Of course, we need this to be a wrong answer cell. Okay, let's create a nib for the wrong answer cell. Okay. Very similar to the other one. So I need a cell here. Pass it the correct class and the user didn't fire. Now we can add some labels. I can just drag and drop. How do you do that? It's an old trick. You just hold down Alt or the Option key and it uh, copies the object. Huh. Interesting. And now we can just drag some outlets. Control drag in our class. A question label. Yes. Answer label. Correct answer label. The correct answer, the green one. Let's be explicit. Okay. And I think that's enough for now. We don't have any tests for the other one. True. And this is the correct answer label. Yes. Let's build. Let's build. Okay. We Crash. are crashing. We need to register the cell and the cube. And this is the wrong answer cell on the nib and the user then fire. My two is done. Let's get this done. Yep. Table view, DQ reusable. And now we can return that cell. And it is optional. Force unwrapped wrong answer cell. Command U. Okay. Quickly make this test pass just by copy and paste the code for the correct answer. Oops, but it is a correct answer. Okay, I think that's it for this tomato. Thoughts on this? 
Well, I quite like the nibs for the cell, and of course we need some refactoring there. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to separate visual from the code. Yeah, I agree. I quite like that. It forces you to add a lot of bangs. We have unit tests, if something goes wrong, a test is gonna crash, or we're gonna have a failing test, so we are good. Cool. Let's have a break and let's continue later. Okay.